This is Brett coming to you live, Channel 2 News. We just received a dead body. Yeah, just get. But that's what it looks like. Well, she arrived. Let's open her up and see what we got. Hey, one news, day 80. I was checking the limited slip. It's a little loose. I'll look at it when I get in there. Ah, <sighs> yep. Three and a half inch brakes. I noticed the tube is bigger here on the Dana 80. So I'm glad I grabbed uh, the bracket tree. Because <clears throat> these are different than the other ones. The bottom. So, Alrighty, pull around, clean her up. Okay, here she is. I'm going to put all new bearings in it. But since this is a used gear, I'm going to set it up the way that the pattern is worn in. So, looks like we got about eight, eight thousandths backlash. And the teeth don't look too bad for 300,000 miles. <clears throat> but I'm going to set it up exactly like this with the, the new preload and the shims and all that. So, eight thousandths it is. Okay, here we go. Getting her tore down. So, I just wanted to pull this in, compare the Dana 70 to the Dana 80. For one, this is a 10 and a half inch ring gear. That is 11.25, 11 and a quarter. And these use 9 sixteenths uh, ring gear bolts where these use half inch fine thread. So the tube diameter on this is about three and a half and it's about four inch on the Dana 80. So if you're doing a swap, you wanna make sure you grab the axle plates, because they are bigger to match the uh, bigger radius here. So we got all tore apart, just so I want to inspect all the bearings. I am changing the ring and pinion carrier bearings, but not. I, I didn't want to change these out unless I needed to, so I'm going to look at them really close. And uh, see if they have any wear. If they do, I'll change them out. Of course, all new seals. Now this Dana 80, this is the only one I could find. Um, with my gear ratio, I looked everywhere. So that shows that no one's getting rid of them because they're pretty reliable. Um, now these, this came in a 2000 Dodge Ram pickup Cummins uh, standard transmission. This had the automatic transmission, same truck, 2500. But they probably figured they needed more durability with the stick shift. They both use 12 by three and a half inch brakes. I'm going to use my old drums. And everything else. Oh, yeah. So there was a little bit of a pinion leak. I, this is after I pressure washed it. But if you can see, there is no preload on that. So the bearing's probably worn a little bit. <clears throat> I did measure 8,000 backlash. I'm going to set it up the same. And this has a limited slip. <clears throat> Before I took it apart, I had a pry bar over here and a big bar over here. And I and I was able to turn it a little bit with probably about 50 pounds of effort. So that tells me that the clutches are probably worn. So I got a set of those coming. Now I'll take her all apart, get her cleaned up, and start doing the bearings. I need to get this thing apart. I read that this pinion nut is torqued about 400, 450 foot pounds. And so it's a one and seven eighths, might be a metric equivalent, but yeah, it was tight. But I was able to get it off with 140 PSI in my Titan Ingersoll ran. It took about a minute or two to get it broke loose, but it came off. Um, the hub nuts are 2 and 9 sixteenths. Um, these are just double. They go into the lock nut to kind of double as a lock. But this is a lock nut, so. Um, what else? That's about it. These are pretty easy to take off. <clears throat> the axles, they appear to be about the same length. The only difference I noticed was the driver's side. The splines are cut a little deeper, so I'll put it back together the same way. All right, time to take her apart. You mark your carrier caps. They made an attempt to mark it, but you can't really read that or that. So I make my own. So I got one and one. Two and two. You gotta go back 
exactly the way it was machined. Okay, I'm just an old broke down mechanic, so I am cheating a little bit. Got a bad back from doing this heavy lifting crap my whole career. <clears throat> so this was in your pretty tight. Got it broke loose. Now then, <clears throat> I want to keep the shims the same, but not these. I wonder if basically just weigh this sucker. Good. Survey says 65 pounds. Holy moly. Alright, so the shims are right here. I'm going to measure them, write it down, and keep them located to the same side. The kit I got did come with the, the new shims, but I'll be setting this all back up. Yep. I'll be getting new one of these. And there's our pinion. Looks like they machined single shims. I'm gonna measure them and see what they are. Alright, right, you guys do this all the time. Tell me if you this is common. These shims are the same. How in the hell did that come out? Alright, now the fun part. Get out the big hammer. So I took um, the washer off. The nut is loose. And now we got a brass punch. But one more thing important. I want to keep my eyeballs. Yeah, look how loose this pinion is. It should be 25 to 40 inch pounds for a new one. See how tight this is. Oh yeah. It's moving. Holy moly, that's freaking tight. Maybe it's not moving. Okay. Not good video. I'll show you when it's done. Okay, here's the setup I use to get the yoke off. Just a steering wheel puller. But look at that rust. That is going to be fun to get out. All right, then. I won't show the clown show that was involved to get that into the press but just for documentation let's see if 40,000 pounds is going to move that thing it's pretty freaking tight that is ridiculous why is it so tight Relief just went. 40,000 pounds is not moving it. You gotta be kidding me. Holy moly. Now what? The relief in the jack, 20 tons was going over relief. Okay, crap plan. Fucker. Can't hold it on to that pinion if you're liquid, can you? Bitch. I record this. It comes flying apart. I don't know if you need to know what the hell happened here. Heating up the inner race of the pinion bearing. See what the hell happens here. This is crazy. If we expand it a little bit. I got 40,000 pounds of pressure on it. And it's going to let go. That was just crazy. 
Let the cut a freaking bearing out. I guess I should probably grab a fire extinguisher. I win! I win! I'm gonna lie, that was scary. <laughs> what the hell? Never had to do that before. Well, I'm not pinging bearing anyway. That sucker was on there. All right, get the crane and get this thing out of here now. And now to get the bearing cups out. Hammer there, and over there on that lip. Let's see how long it takes to get these guys out. Holy cow. Yep, that day I didn't think that was going to be that difficult to get that pain bearing out. Pinion, that was just crazy ridiculous. Not a few movement. Why? All right. Got my shims. Definitely want to measure and document these. Maybe put new ones in. I hear a siren. All right, flip it over to the other one. Okay, so there's no crush washer on this setup. But you got shims here on the front end and you got these shims on the back i'm going to measure all these and put it exactly the same and i'll show you where yep you gotta set those shims in there before you put the bearing cup back in the new one and then that other race right here where i'll be knocking that guy out and i'll show you later but yeah there's a little bit of wear on there the color it's a little bit of gray to it, a little bit of wear. Since I got it out, I thought, huh, be a piece of cake to just rebuild it. Yeah, right. These are pretty darn tough. That one's out. And the joy of measuring all the shims and putting it back together. Oh yeah, I gotta take that guy off. I'm gonna try welding on that sucker, try that trick. All right, for my next trick that may or may not work, I gotta get this guy off. So I'm gonna try welding around the bearing surface of the race here. See if it'll heat up enough to drop off like a, putting a ring gear on. We shall see. does not work. I guess I'm cutting it. That's okay. I have cutting tools. Okay, the welding trick, not so much. But the grinding trick, yeah, that worked. Came right off. Alright, next. Yep, 
opinion, all cleaned up, put on a lathe and emery cloth. So we got 45,000 shims here. This will go behind the bearing cup that goes into the case. And then I got 55,000s right here. There is no crush washer. <clears throat> so this will come down. And this is how you uh, set your 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 uh, preload drag right here is with these shims right here. So look how easy that slides. It took way more than that to get it apart. But so that's how you adjust your drag. And with these, this is how you adjust your pinion depth. Hopefully it's all the same because I'm just putting new bearings in it. Yeah, we'll see. Got beat in with the shims underneath of it. Got to use a, some type of tool there to get all the way down. Got the new bearing going on in the press. Yep, that's going. Okay, Dana Axel, why do you want to confuse everybody between the track lock and the power lock? So first off, this row right here is how they had it all arranged from the factory. Now, if you count the surfaces, see, these are all put together, not turning. The only surface is turning against this one, and then these are all put together, and then that one. So, <clears throat> if you count them up, there's only about four surfaces. I'm rearranging it to where you have a drive here, turn against that, and a drive there, turn against that, drive, and alternating. And I think you get about ten surfaces. So, just by rearranging this, I think you're going to double... The limited slip capability force. Another thing that people don't think about is when the carrier is rotating um, your pinions and your side gears, that's where your axle goes, <clears throat> the load imposed wants to do this. It wants to push more onto your, um, your clutches. Now, I think the track lock in the later models they use about half of the number of frictions and every other one was a, a, a fiber type um, friction and some of them were conical and they don't seem to last very long. This is 300,000 miles on this and looking at the new ones, they look just like this. So I'm going to reuse these. Um, so you got these bevel washers that are actually springs. They apply pressure to the whole stack. So I got my limited slip fluid additives. I'm gonna put this together. All right, I'm gonna put this together real quick. I got some 85140 oil with my uh, friction modifier. <clears throat> if you look right here, the bevel, the inner part rode against here. <clears throat> so that means there's gonna be a lot of force right there. If you look at the stack, you look at the outer part, and there's two left over. So I'm going to have these be the end. So it'll be doubled up thick for this bevel to push against. So we're going to start with the outer tang drive. If this will have fiber, you'd want to soak it for an hour or so. But since these are not fiber, I'm just going to run with it. Kind of like building a tranny with the clutches. <clears throat> so if this is super boring, you can go forward. So I'm just stacking and alternating. <clears throat> the outer drive with the inner tang to drive the actual... Uh, side gear where your axle goes through. And these are the outer drive. If I had a choice, I would definitely go with this one compared to the uh, fiber track lock. I've just seen a lot of videos people pulling apart and they, they just disintegrate. And I haven't seen any of these do that. So. Stack and then our bevel. Remember the bevel, the inner shiny part you can see where it's rubbing goes against that. So these will engage all of the inner drive splines. 
just have to turn it, index it all until you can find that it's locked in. You definitely want to add oil to all these moving parts. Pinions and side gears. One side, and I'm out lady, and then I uh, just do that to this side and uh, put it all together. It's a cake, all right. Got both sides stacked together, I'll just put the two halves together now. You really want to make sure these are seated all the way. Hold it in there. Let's see if I get the right slot. The roundy with the roundy. All right. I'm going to put the axle in here and rotate it, make sure it indexes really good. And then I'll uh, take those bolts. Torque them down to 70 foot pounds with red Loctite. Before I run it down, I'll check this gap here, make sure it's pretty even all the way around. That gap is there because the bevel washers will be, uh, they're unsprung right now. You clamp these together, that bevel washer will straighten out a little bit and apply the clamp force to the clutches. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Make sure you put it back to where you marked it, here and here, two dot, two dot. Make sure you keep all that together because it's machined that way. If you put it together a different way, it won't be true. And then, you get your weedies, get ready for your workout. So exciting. Not really. And then once you do your star pattern, I like to go all the way back around just to make sure you didn't skip or miss a hole. Oh yeah, remember that gap I was showing you? That is kind of a little bit of an indicator of how much material has gone away from your clutches because if you unbolt that and it doesn't separate that means your bevel washers are not preloading anything because all the material went away but this one turned out pretty good okay, now time to pull these bearings off I'm not completely sure but I do think they shim for your preload and backlash with shims behind the side carrier Bearings. I'm going to cut this off. I don't have a fancy tool. If you're setting this up from scratch, I'll definitely buy that tool that removes these so you don't destroy bearings every time you have to make a shim adjustment. I don't want to contaminate it with all this yucky stuff. So I'm going to make a cut at an angle like this so I don't cut into the housing. Let me try that. It'll be boring, so I should go all the way through. Just take your chisel. This stuff is so hard. It kept doling my chisel. This this is as hard as the chisel, if not harder. So as I was suspecting, the shims are under here. If you have to make backlash adjustments, you're going to need that special tool. Because otherwise you'll be buying a new bearing and you need to take it off. So they do sell a tool to remove that if you're setting this up. But I'm just throwing on new bearings, so we should be okay. Another thing, look at this surface here. If you're going to set this on a press, if this surface comes up higher, go ahead and save your old one and use that to push down on it. So, off to the press. All right, so we got our shims positioned. And we got our 
credits going. Take a look. What does that mean? Way too much. It means I need more shims over here to bring it into the pinion. Well, I guess I get to buy a new tool. Well, Damn it. Crap, since I had to stop and buy more tools, I'm not too upset about it, but I'm gonna buy that bearing puller and I might as well buy a case spreader. Do it right, right? So let's go ahead and uh, push in some Dana 80, man. Trying to find the right seal. Took a while. Anyway, so I inspected and cleaned all these. These are, uh, let me get some oil. Oil, oil. Oil. And we got our seal. Make sure the tiny lip dust seal is out. These are famous for not going in straight. So I'm just gonna take my time and press it in. And watch it and make sure it goes straight. And adjust it if not. Oh, perfect. And just like that. Good. And get those going. I'm gonna do my brakes. Among mechanics, is how tight you tighten wheel bearing. Well, this is a nylock, so it's a little uh, confusing. What I do, I come down and feel this rotating. At the same time, you feel it take up zero, zero lash. Then you want to go about that much more. What that does is it puts a good preload on the bearing without being over tight and it's not loose. It's too loose. You wipe out the seal and do it all over again. That's me how I know. Okay, well, a Dana 80 requires a 450 foot pound torque, and this is how I'm gonna do it. This only goes to 250 pounds, but I got this 24 inch breaker bar. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, here's my theory. So there's my 34-inch uh, bar. I just wanted to be longer than this 24-inch breaker bar. So I'm using my fat butt, 230 pounds to help do this. So 230 foot-pounds, halfway down one foot is 230 foot-pounds because it's one foot out. Now if you come out here, guess what? You double it. So... It's going to be about 460 foot-pounds of torque. This is the only time for a fat body comes in handy. Because I can't afford a big old torque wrench. Put my weight on it. And that's about 460 foot-pounds. Now we check the running torque. After replaying that video, I was looking at how much that breaker bar was bending. So I put a two by two quarter wall, stood on it, and it came down probably another half a flat's worth. So we gotta take that into account. And then check the preload on the pinion bearing. The carrier is out. This is torque to spec, 450 pounds. There's no seal and the bearing is dry. And I pre-marked my specifications, 25 to 40 inch pounds, so I can just watch it fall in between here while I'm rotating it. So we we'll have a couple turns to get it going, and then try and read it as we go. All right, what we got here? Just barely within there. We're on the low side, so we're about 25 five inch pounds 
Um, that will probably work. It feels pretty good. I think we'll run with that. Right, so, if you happen to have a one inch drive impact, they seem to do pretty good. So, yeah, over a thousand foot pounds of torque. <laughs> so much easier. With one inch so drive. opinion for a different point of view. So here's your shim sack. These are hard shim. So you tighten all of this down to where it bottoms out. And that sets your preload. So it, to move it tighter or looser to get your rolling drag, you just change these shims out. The other style is a crush sleeve where you'll have a sleeve here that you'll tighten and tighten and tighten until it crushes to get the right uh, torque spec for the rotating torque. So here's my yoke. You can see there's a pretty good groove in there. So you can either buy a new one or repair your old one. This is 23 years old. I believe they made stuff a lot better back in the day. So I'm going to reuse this. I know it's good. So here, guess how much this piece of sheet metal was? This one was $60. There's a part number if you want to reference that. But before you put this on... You want to make sure that wherever you're going to measure it to where the seal rides on this new surface here is going to cover up. Well, you want this to be where the seal is, so you need to pre-measure that. And this is the tool you use to install it. And it's come like that, but I'm going to do this on the press so it's really straight. And I'm also going to put some Ultra Black RTV in here because this is wet in here. The oil is in here, and you don't want it to go past and leak everywhere. Okay, here's our one shot that screw up a $60 piece of sheet metal. Okay, so I got my very, very thin layer of ultra black RTV on there. Let's take our tool. Also, you see this little scribed mark? Um, after you get it on, you'll take some pliers and pull that off. So, I'm going to make sure we get this perfectly straight. Because you don't want to do this over. I don't think they warranty it for screw ups. Once you're committed, you gotta go. I'm gonna go to the bottom here. Alright. I think that's it. Our seal's gonna ride about there. I'm gonna take some pliers and rip off this ring. I'm just gonna take some side cutters and see if I can get in there. A little more difficult than anticipated, but what's new? As you can see, I'm having difficulty here. So I'm gonna get some different tools and uh, try and pull this bottom ring off. I'll show you when I'm done. Holy cow. Took a bit to get it started, but it's kind of like opening a tuna can. Man, probably the most difficult part. Get this stupid piece here off without marring the nice finish you just put on. Alright. Here's our new surface. Like new, oh, but not rebuild. I decided to also do the brakes. Um, Alright, raise a hand. Who's done a Monodana 80? Ford, Dodge. They got this style. I tell you what, I've done about 50 try to avoid it like the plague because they are such a pain in the ass they probably changed the design because of all the people complaining it's like what the hell were you thinking the way that i do it first thing you identify primary and secondary okay so this is the rear of the vehicle the thicker shoe is going to be your primary so the primary on this it's going to be on the rear the wheel rotates this way up against the anchor thicker shoe rear primary so the first thing I do 
is put this spring here on. Try to film at the same time. Put this spring on here, put on one end, and then have this over on this side of the pin. Lean it over, uh, get your wheel cylinder lug engage, bring it over, and then you can start putting these guys on. These are the most fun you'll ever have in your entire life. Just kidding. So I, you know, came up with a tool, it's pretty simple. Just put a groove in a screwdriver that you don't want no more. And get some long needle nose pliers. You're gonna come in and push on this guy with about a hundred pounds of force, because that's how tight they are. And then you're gonna take your needle nose and position it in there. This is the easy one. The more fun one is down in there. Let's see if you can see it. Anyway. After you get that, that one on and that one on, then you can play with this spring here and uh, your adjuster. Take this apart and put some man ICs on there. Um, these brakes are actually pretty good, but the only trick to them is you have to keep them adjusted up. So with your little slot on the back with your little tool here, um, adjust them up to where they just touch, not dragging, and uh, they'll work really good. When I first got this guy, I was wiping out front brake pads about every 30,000 miles until I started doing this trick, and it made the front pads last twice as long. All right, so there is the fun part of the brake. Let's see. Snow in the mountains. Polar kit I just got. I can't believe how cheap it was, 100 bucks. So I'm gonna come in here and find one that just grabs the bottom of that. I've never used one of these before, so you get to experience for the first time like I do. I'm trying to figure all this out. We got this that comes in here, I imagine, for the center support for that. Come in and adjust. These guys down. I really don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll give it a shot. Sure. All right, we'll see. not even ruined all right I'm sold so I gotta say I looked different places this kit was close to a thousand dollars you can tell this is tempered steel so I don't know how they can sell this for a hundred and thirteen dollars but pretty amazing all right reach him Back to the press. The 65 pound carrier unit. This might make good video if I was like smash my fingers and everyone laugh. But look, you can't go past here. You have to drop it. That's all you gotta do, right? And then, got these guys come in here. I'm gonna be able to do this without case breaker. Got one coming. So these were 191 thousandths on each end. Man, that's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Alright, where's my special tool? Alright, let's see if they go in or not. Might need that case breaker. Added 15 thousandths. Oh, so let's unhook it. Oh yeah, it's going in good. 
Alright. There's my other special tool. but not real bad. But that feels tight. All right, let me get the caps on there and see what we got for backlash. All right, here we go. What do we got? We got nine, nine thousandths. I was at eight. The spec is four to 10 thousandths backlash. I think I'm going to leave it on the loose side because if it gets hot, it's going to expand a little bit. It's going to get hot from pulling this stupid thing. All right. All right, so we got the ring gear in there. And what they recommend to check for the carrier preload is about a 10 inch pound increase from what you had before. So I had 25 before. What is that? About 35? I think I'm good. 25 before and so that tells me that the carrier preload is good, not too tight. And the backlash is good. We we're only 1,000 off from what we started with. So I'm gonna pull this back off, install the seal. And torque it again. Information pattern reading. I wasn't setting it up or doing anything crazy. So just want to see what she's going to look like because we are using a used gear. We are kind of stuck with what we got. Hopefully it's good because well because I don't want to do all this over again. Right, where are we at? Whoa, ho, ho, ho. somebody from the factory did a good job. Right in the middle and right there. I don't think you can ask for anything better than that. All right, I'm gonna run with that. Seal installed with some grease on the inside of the lip. We got about a tablespoon of Ultra Black inside the splines. And then when I get it on, Put a bunch of RTV here. Don't worry about making a mess because you don't want that oil to get past the splines and come out here because it will. All cleaned up. Last look. Uh, one tube of ultra gray on there. Put it on before it skins and tighten it up. Oh, yeah. So here's the axle flange gaskets I'm using. So that's the friction modifier. I used all new Timken bearings. Okay, this is a test of how tight the posi unit is now. Okay, it took about 200 and some pounds to move it. But before, I could move it with one hand, so rearranging those uh, clutch discs made a huge difference. Cool. Nice sunny Friday morning. Did some scientific wrapping on this thing to keep it from falling off. Gonna be a little sketchy moving it and getting it up under the truck but it's that time and of course things can't go as planned my u-bolts are not long enough because the tube diameter is bigger so probably gonna chop these blocks down on the mill that's gonna take a while all right, well, got Here the blocks go. off, but do you notice anything? <sighs> Crap. The locator pin sheared off. See, that one's got one. That one broke off into here. Great. Step outside and gather my thoughts. What a pain. Nothing can go as planned, can it? That was an F word if you didn't hear it. Anyway, what I got to do <clears throat> is another thing. I bought these this lift kit about 20 years ago. This is, holy cow, about 
20 pounds cast iron. If you look, this is uh, 200 thousandths shorter than this. So when I rig it up in the mill, I have to compensate for that. The tube diameter is an inch bigger. Actually about a half inch bigger, three and a half to four inch. So I want to keep the same lift rate height. So I'm going to take, I should take a half inch, but I'm probably going to take an inch out. And then to come back to this stupid thing, the locating pin, that bolt has only been rusting for 22 years, so that'll be fun to take apart. So I have to take that out somehow. Right there. Drill it. Burn it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But let's get these blocks milled down. And then I have to redrill a hole here and then make a new pin. Easy. Alright, it's gonna take a while. Okay, plan B, that's gonna take way too long. I'll be there for two days. So I got my carbide metal blade. I got about nine hundred thousandths marked off and I'll mill the last one hundred thousandths. Let's see how this goes. Put the hearing protection on. Wiping out that hundred dollar blade, that I come over to the carbide tip bandsaw and started wiping out that two hundred dollar blade. So I started cutting crick and oh, screw this! So I threw it on the ground and broke it. So back to the mill. It's just gonna take a while. Crap. they make these blocks out of just destroyed my carbide $50 end mill bit running out of options here all right what plan is this Delta echo number 10 let's see what this guy does do this one comparison with the one I chopped and when I milled so I don't have that much more to take off of that one I'm looking at the chips and the blue color what a mess I was probably going a little too fast but it survived shoot it's gonna take hours just to clean up this mess well not perfect but they are an inch shorter what a pain man it took longer than I thought anyway on to the next challenge. <laughs> Maybe I'll drive this today. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So now to try and get this stupid bolt out. This is going to be fun. Sorry, I wasn't filming, right. but you just missed an explosive, unscheduled disassembly. Holy cow. 
there was some tension on these guys and they went uh, flying everywhere. No injuries. Yay. Continue. Start with the good side. So it's basically a rounded off head, nut and bolt. So this is what came out of the top and the bottom was broke off in the thingamajiggy. So I'm gonna take a bolt and put it back this way. Put a nut on top. This part's gotta be rounded, so I'm gonna stick that on the lathe and make it round. Okay, gonna take my 80 year old machine. Make this round. Yep, it's working. What's it look like? Is it roundish? All right. Mm. A little more. That looks about the right size. Now then, back over to the machine shop side of the shop. I gotta take this and make some holes in here so these will locate all right drill some holes so cutting my finger on this sharp machine edge might have to take care of that i know pretty exciting huh very exciting. So, I need to find center. Make an X. Make an X. X marks the spot. And then, I measure my pen. It's three quarters inch. So, do that. Hit center. So a pile hole and a three quarter hole. Way too fast for a three quarter inch bit. Let's see. It's kind of working. And of course, it's too fast. So to change this stupid mess, you gotta loosen this bolt, loosen this bolt, undo this belt, this belt. Anyway, let me slow this down for the bit. Of course, when I did that, I wiped out the drill bit, so I had to sharpen it. Before I could sharpen it, I had to dress the stone. But, it's cutting now. Alrighty. Pretty exciting, huh? There's our hole. Perfect. That'll locate our thing again. Alright. An unscheduled four hours of machine shop stuff. I had to stop and take a break. And uh, need some cookie. Anyway, hmm. so I make this gluten free raisin chocolate chip oatmeal cookie that will revive the dead. If you want the recipe, hit me up. Now I gotta figure out how to compress this back together because my jack is being held up. All right, try to put this shit back Holy together. Shit. It's a good thing I didn't get killed and this thing came plopping out of here. Look at the spring tension on that bitch. I'm gonna need my jack. Damn it. I just gotta laugh because it can't be just one thing. It's gotta be 20. Let me show you. So here I am trying to compress this big old freaking huge ass spring. Here's my bolt that needs to come back up through there. So when I go like this, well, it's not lined up, but it was. Anyway, it's lifting me off the jack. So what I gotta do, take it all apart, make a longer bolt, and then clamp it together with the bolt. I gotta take all this apart, get it out of the way, machine me another bolt. All right, so Damn. I got these top three clamped together because you have slider sheet metal thingies in here between them. And uh, they'll move around and your hole won't line up. So. Next thing I did is I uh, angled the plate to where that bolt was going through the same angle as this bolt. So I'm going to bring it up if I can. 
Get this out of the way. You see that? Of course not. All right. Whoa. You know what's scary? I'm lifting the truck off the jack. All right, so I'm gonna tap on that, see if I can't get that. We're just about a quarter inch away. I'm gonna see if I can get that in there. All right, I had to get a clamp on there to assist. That one spring, man, there's a lot of pressure on that sucker. All right, so I'm gonna get a nut started and clamp it down, and then I'll probably have to cut the top of that bolt off. Finally got her pinched together. There is a lot of force on that. So this is a half inch bolt. I put a stainless nut. And I turned that down to three quarter inch hole. That'll pile it onto here. So if you ever see a truck uh, dog tracking down the road, it's probably got a broken locator leaf spring, and the axle is shifted one way or the other. All right, what else can go wrong? Probably shouldn't say that. All right, no jack stand. It's in there. So on these, I did 75 foot pounds cross pattern, and then a 90 foot pound. All right, let's see what else we can find that won't work. The pinion comes out a little bit further, but there's just a little bit of room taken up in here. But if not, because I got a lift and there's a different angle, which makes the driveline want to be longer. Um, you could probably bring this back a little bit because you still have some room up here for this to come in and out. So you could probably slot these holes or make a bracket and move it forward if you had to. All right, final process, putting some oil in this thing. See what happens. Got all the brake lines and park brake cables hooked up. I think we're ready to bleed the brakes and see what happens. Yes. That is a piece of shit brake bleeder. Of course I made a mess. I'm gonna need two people to help me bleed the brakes. All right, get it outside and wash that shit off. Okay, it's alive. Calling it good. Holy moly. <laughs> what a pain in the ass for one freaking bolt to break.